So I remember in 2008, we, we got an email from a, an entity, the Global Compact, saying the report was due. And we honestly could not remember what it was that we had signed up for. And the then CEO, Michael Joseph, then came and told us, oh yeah, um, there was this meeting and we signed up to the Global Compact and it's really about reporting on our business practices through a sustainable business lens. My colleague and I at the time actually had no clue what this report meant and what we were meant to do with it. But to be very honest, that was how we started our interaction and our engagement with the UN Global Compact. <clears throat> hey there, many. <laughs> in the early days of my career, I lived and worked in Somalia for five years. So the Sanda then used to spend most of her, most of her days in a hijab, uh, working around Somali communities. But it was really a great way to start my career. Um, another thing that you may not know about me is um, I speak a couple of languages. So I speak uh, English, also speak French and German. I studied them through to university. And another thing, which I really need to get back to this one, is when I was much younger, I, I was a very active swimmer. And I actually swam for Kenya during the All Africa Games when they were held here in Nairobi a while ago, actually many years ago. Are we on camera? <laughs> so a couple of things that I do in my downtime. One is actually I take the opportunity to rest. And sometimes I actually do nothing. Um, I think that's a great way to fill your downtime. Other than that, I love to travel. Um, I also have the beginnings of a fledgling art collection. Uh, what I've loved most about the COVID era and how everybody has, uh, you know, developed new skills for me, it's been uh, learning how to make a couple of things such as donuts and I've also explored um, new things such as knitting and crochet, primarily to keep the mind active and busy. You know, some people see it as a health crisis, others see it as an economic crisis. Unfortunately, yes, we acknowledge that there's some businesses that have had to either shut down or slow down their operations. But I think overall for me, the biggest lesson around business and the COVID pandemic has been the opportunity to truly understand where the customer opportunities lie, seizing those opportunities and shifting businesses, but also trying to keep supply chains in place. So like many of us, every holiday, uh, my parents would pack us up and we'd go to Shags. A holiday in the city was never really an option. And I remember spending time in my home area. I come from Busia County. And one of the things that my parents always used to do is take us out with them whenever they were engaging with community. So, you know, by the time I joined school and was able to shape my ideas around a career, I always knew that I was going to work in the community. So I can honestly say that by the time I was about nine or 10 years old, I was very clear what I was going to do. The first person I'd love to have lunch with would be Bob Collimore. And the reason I say this is that Bob was such an inspiration and a mentor around this area of work. Um, it was under his leadership that really shaped the f and formalized what we do around sustainability and sustainable reporting. I'd also just love to have somebody like um, Michelle Obama around, primarily just for fun, but because I also believe that she has a great view of the world and humanity and the role that women should play in that. So what keeps me awake at night, primarily in this role is, you know, sometimes I, I, I wonder if we are making sustainable and long-term impact. And it's something that myself and the team always look at whenever we are deciding who to partner with, what initiatives to drive and what to do within the business. Because I think it's very important for the department as a whole and all the work that we do within corporate affairs and the business to be sure that we can deliver true impact and true transformation.